if you have that situation where you're like, hey, this feels like political, like this is a political hit on someone or this is like a witch hunt, you as an individual within a department, if it seems questionable, what are your like recourses for that? What can you do? I mean, obviously they have like, uh, what do they call whistleblower complaints and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Is that really it? Or is there other ways you could be like, hey, this is, this doesn't feel right, you know? Well, in that particular investigation, um, it wasn't apparent at first. Uh, it it took a little time to flesh out what was really going on, mm -hmm. and uh, but by that point in time, wrongdoing had been discovered in the investigation on the part of other individuals, and so the 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 investigation more uh, morphed into something else and moved on to a different a, a different target set, and um, you know. There was nothing really that that I could do as a special agent um, because I was reporting to the I was actually reporting to the very top of the organization. Uh, and there was nothing I could do um, for, at my end uh, to uh, to mitigate this because I I basically my job is to be a fact finder, an mm. unbiased fact finder, and that's what I'm reporting. I'm more effective if I don't jump up and, and down and say, this is bullshit. I know what you guys are doing, blah, 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 because basically I might as well just put a gun to my head and blow my brains out because I've just committed political suicide or career suicide. I think it's far more effective to present the facts of the case and, and, you know, uh, and, and make it clear that I'm the fact finder. I'm the one you sent out to do this and I'm not finding anything, mm -hmm. you know? And let them deal with that and let them deal with that reality. Yeah. So it's, it's such a weird, I mean, I, I have a, like I said before, I have friends that are in local law enforcement. I've asked them that before, like, Hey, if you were called to do something that you felt was unconstitutional, is there something that, is there a way to report that or a, an out, you know, like is, what is the process? And that's kind of, there's no real, I've never gotten like a real kind of answer for it other than like, Hey, there's like the whistleblower. If you think it's something so egregious, you can, you know, become a whistleblower, but it's like one of those, like you said, you do that. You become a whistleblower. You're basically committing career suicide. Even if they mm -hmm. say, Hey, there's whistleblower protections. There's this and that. Well, cool. A year from now, no one's going to know who you are. And those reports are very easily to go, hey, this guy hasn't right. been per performing. Well, according to, according to the FBI agents who are whiff whistleblowers now, you know, they've been uh, sanctioned and all kinds of things have happened to them. Oh, yeah. And theoretically, that's not supposed to happen. But who knows? Once again, the devil's always in the details. You yeah, I just know. saw that. There was a congressional hearing like a, like a right. week or two ago where three of them, they were saying that promotions have been put on hold or like they were they were moved to a different area, to a different jur or jurisdiction or whatever, different office. And then once they moved to that area, they were basically put on like, uh, uh, unpaid leave, you know? And it was like, what do you do? You know, again, the process is a punishment, right? You know, the number one rule in the bureau, as I have been told by many, many agents from the bureau. And I actually watched somebody say that during an interview on a 2020, one of those murder of the week things. Never, ever embarrass the Bureau. Never embarrass the Bureau. Rule number one, rule number two, and rule number three, see rule number one. Yeah, so. but that's cool and all until it starts becoming an issue. You know, well, and that's where well. that's uh, that's where a lot of people are, are getting. They're like this. Um, we feel like investigations are lopsided or. Well, let's right. talk. Let's let's kind of shift a little bit. I mean, you worked on uh -huh. this joint joint task or joint terrorism, terrorism task. task force. Excuse me. Right. A little tongue twister for a second. Huh. What do you guys, how do you guys identify like this is terrorism? Because again, this has been in the news lately where they were talking about, you know, parents being upset at school board meetings. We're starting to get like uh, profiles built on them and stuff like that. Domestic terrorism. How do you define that? What, I mean, how do you become, how do you get into the crosshairs of the FBI, you know, as a domest possible domestic terrorist? Well, I can't comment on what, what goes on now. Uh, I know that. Uh, terrorism is is the use of violence or the threat of violence to impact government process and uh, population. And, uh, you know, if it's domestic, then it's organized and, you know, 
perpetrated by, you know, persons living within, you know, the United States, generally speaking. I mean, it's far more complex than that, but that's kind of, you know, sort of what it is. Um, you know, um, it is a – it is something that the lawyers at the Justice Department decide – when they uh, when they evaluate the facts of an investigation or a case, then they go, they look at it and they go, okay, this is terrorism, this isn't terrorism, that kind of thing. Um, I can think of a couple of instances where that happened. The um, the Fort Hood shooter, uh, you know, uh, this is a guy who was uh, Nadal Hassan, Major Nadal Hassan. Uh, he he's a guy who clearly was was uh, following uh, the teachings of, of an Islamist uh, leader uh, and, you know, in, in communication and all kinds of things going on there. Um, and uh, I don't know all the facts of the case, but, you know, if it, if it has web feet, feathers, and quacks like a duck and tastes good with orange sauce, it's a duck. So chances are this guy, you know, was a terrorist. But it took a long time for the government to say that. And... Uh, in fact, initially the case was characterized for months and months as, as workplace violence, mm -hmm. which really it wasn't. Anybody who knew anything about it knew that wasn't the case. And there was an incident on July 4th, 2002 in Los Angeles where uh, uh, an individual, uh, Egyptian-born individual, went up to the El Al counter at LAX and started capping rounds off and um, killed some people. And uh, an LL Al security employee capped him, and then uh, that was it. And for the longest period of time, uh, uh, nobody would classify that as an act of terror. In fact, I was a task force commander for, for the Department of Justice Counterterrorism Task Force, and I'm talking to FBI supervisors. Uh, about this incident, and we're, you know, I'm saying, okay, so what are we gonna, what are we calling this? And I said, is this, are you guys gonna call this an act of terrorism? And oh no, 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 we're, 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 no, no, we're gonna do that. And I'm like, okay, oh, yeah, what's we the know hesitation? some facts about this, you know? I mean, this kind of smells like that, pretty, pretty clearly. You know, there are, there are all kinds of ramifications, political, economic. Uh, cultural, when something is declared an act of terror, there's obviously all kinds of things that happen, especially, especially in the airline industry, especially, you know, a public, you know, uh, airline industry or the hotel industry or something like that. Uh, but at some point in time, we have to be honest with the public, so the public is aware that that is out there, and you have to, you know, you 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 need to make sure that the public knows that terrorism is, is, is the reason for this particular incident and not something else. Uh, but uh, so I understand that people want to have their ducks in a row before they declare it something. But at a certain point in time, everybody knows mm -hmm. what the real deal is. And it doesn't take months and months to figure it out, you know? Yeah, that kind of, when you see that, I mean, I remember the Nadal Hassan case and that going down and then everyone like workplace violence. What the, what are you talking about? Like, this is obviously right. terrorism. Exactly. I don't understand the hesitation when it's something like that, where it's so obvious because all you're doing is eroding trust in the public. Cause I'm going to look at that and go, what kind of morons are, are working here or, or what kind of activists are working here to, to try to you know, change the story from, from reality. And that's the frustration I think a lot of people have. So that's, it's so great. I mean, it sucks that the first thing you mentioned was the considerations was politics. <laughs> you know, that's, well, like that's exactly what the, that is what it is. The consideration is politics. Uh,